Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, Job chapter 13 today. Get your Bible, open it up to Job 13 verse 1. We'll begin in just a minute. Remember, you can study all of God's Word with me using my audio Bible messages at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. That's at thebibleversebyverse.com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Job chapter 13, Job continues to reply to his three so-called friends who initially came, I guess, to comfort him in his terrible sufferings and loss, um, but it turned into a boatload of accusations, unfounded, unproved accusations against Job, suggesting that he is the reason that all these bad things happened. Lo, Job says, my eye has seen all this. My ear has heard and understood it. What you know, the same do I know also. I am not inferior to you. So Job's three friends have made a lot of true statements. I've been saying that all along. A lot of pithy little moral statements that were absolutely true for the most part. But they haven't told Job anything that he doesn't already know. And sadly, they have not said anything to help Job either. 13, or 3. Surely I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to reason with God. So Job is tired of going around in circles with his pathetic friends. He'd like to talk to God. He wants this conversation to count, so he wants to talk to God. 4. <clears throat> but you are forgers of lies. Well, good for Job. You are forgers of lies. You are all physicians of no value. In other words, they're all worthless doctors because they don't understand the source of problem of Job's problems, and they sure aren't doing anything to help him. They, they didn't treat his problems with any biblical advice either. Five, oh, that you would altogether hold your peace, and it should be your wisdom. Job says the wisest thing that you three men can do is just shut up. 6. Hear now my reasoning, and hearken to the pleadings of my lips. Will you speak wickedly for God, and talk deceitfully for Him? You know, telling somebody who is suffering that God is punishing them is telling a lie in God's name. God doesn't chasten His people. God does, I should say, chasten His people. But only God knows when and why. 8. Will you accept his person? Will you contend for God? In other words, Job says, you three are defending God for pelting me with all this trouble, and you're acting like his lawyer. 9. Is it good that he should search you out? Or as one man mocks another, do you so mock him? In other words, God's going to judge you for misrepresenting him, boys. And they were. 10. He will surely reprove you if you do secretly show partiality. God is interested in fairness. And he does not appreciate partiality and judgment. 11. Shall not his excellence make you afraid? and his dread fall upon you, God's power and his holiness did not terrify them like it should. You could tell God's holiness and his power didn't tell, terrify them like it should have because of the way they were talking about God and misrepresenting what was happening to Job and blaming God for it. Well, not blaming God, but saying God was responsible for it. I, they were just misrepresenting God. You better be careful when you talk about God. All these people who just so flippantly today say, well, God told me. God showed me. 
I had a vision from God. I had a dream. I, I, I'm not saying that I can't. I've had a few dreams that I know came from God because when I was waking up, there was a principle from the Bible applied to it right away. But I don't run around flippantly saying God spoke to me when, when all it is is the imagination of my hearts, which is what a lot of Pentecostals and Charismatics do today and have been doing. Useless verbiage. Better be careful when you talk about God. These jokers were way too familiar with God. 12. Your proverbs like are like unto ashes. Your defenses are defenses of clay. Job says, your great words are about as helpful as ashes. Because they don't do me any good at all. 13. Hold your peace. Let me alone that I may speak. And let come on me what will. Job's frustration is at its peak. So Job says, I will say what I think. And I will accept the consequences. I don't really care. When you've been hurt that much, like Job, when you have been, when you have gone through the nightmare that Job has gone through, and now at the hands of his so-called friends, making it worse, you're going to say what's on your mind, and you don't care what the repercussions are. Fourteen. Why do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hand? All Job is saying is, I don't care about preserving my life. So I'm going to say what I want to say. 15, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will defend my own ways before him. Job says, I am innocent, and I don't deserve all this suffering, and I don't, and I don't understand it. I don't understand. But I'm still going to trust God. And if it kills me, I'm still going to keep trusting God. Because God must be, he must know what he's doing, even though I can't figure it out. I'm going to trust him, even if it kills me. Even if I die. Because he, he must know what he's doing. 16. He also shall be my salvation, for a hypocrite shall not come before him. Job believes that somehow, some way, all these bad things will work for his good. In the long run, Job believes that he will be vindicated by God in the end. 17. Hear diligently my speech and my declaration with your ears. Behold, now I have prepared my case. I know that I shall be justified. Job says, I've been defending myself. And I've been able to speak convincingly and convincing, convincingly, and therefore I've made my case. God will acquit me, Job says. I'll be found innocent. 19. <clears throat> Who is he that will contend with me? For now, if I hold my tongue, I shall die. Job throws out a challenge to anyone who thinks that they can prove that he's suffering because some, of some personal sin. Only do not two things unto me, then will I not hide myself from you. Withdraw your hand far from me, and let not your dread make me afraid. Then call, and I will answer, or let me speak, and you answer me. Job says, God, he's talking to God. I have two requests, if you will. My first request is that you would stop hurting me. Meaning... <clears throat> Just stop beating me up. My second request is that you talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, God, so that I can talk to you and so that I know that you hear me and so that I can listen to you. Job is trying to tell God what to do and how to do it, but God is God, and he will do what he thinks is right. 23. How many are my iniquities and sins. Make me know my transgressions and my sin. In other words, Job says, show me the list of sins that I have committed, God. Show me how bad I have been. 24. Why hide you your face and hold me 
for your enemy. Job has all these problems because it doesn't seem like anything is getting through to God. Verse 25. Will you break a leaf driven to and fro, and will you pursue the dry stubble? Job says, God, it seems like you just keep kicking me around. I'm already down for the count, and you're still kicking me around. He's He's being beaten like a borrowed mule is what he is saying. 26, for you write bitter things against me and make me possess the iniquities of my youth. You put my feet also in the stocks and watch closely all my paths. You set a bound to the soles of my feet. So Job figures that God has added up all of his sins from the time that he was a little boy. He's been calculating, God has been, see? And one day he pulled out the list, now he's punishing him for every single one of them all at one time. So Job feels like God is treating him like a desperate criminal. It's as if, it's as if God has Job under house arrest. 28, and he, like a rotten thing, consumes as a garment that is moth-eaten. Job sees himself as slowly rotting away. You know, if a person does not trust the sovereignty of God in the middle of hard times, then they will feel as if their life is rotting away. You got to find God in your trials. You got to look for Jesus Christ in the midst of your trials. Look for ways that you can glorify him in the midst of your trials and trust him that he has allowed whatever he has allowed for some good purpose, spiritually good purpose for you and maybe others. And you have to find God in your trials. You have to look for him in hard times so you're going to go crazy. But that's what living by faith is all about. Finding God in the midst of your trials. And we'll stop right there. Study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, you can be by praying for me and God's Word. When you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture verse by verse. So long, everyone.